While the console manufacturers are somewhat averse to calling them that, the PS4 Pro and Xbox Scorpio represent the closest thing we're likely to get to a ninth console generation, Switch notwithstanding. With a new generation comes new hardware, and while it was initially assumed that the PS4 Pro features relatively unaltered off-the-shelf hardware, it appears as though Sony's new platform has a few hardware tricks up its sleeve. Eurogamer's Digital Foundry recently conducted an excellent and in-depth interview with PS4 Pro Systems architect Mark Cerny. We strongly recommend checking out that interview. During the course of the interview, Cerny revealed a few interesting tidbits and enhancements about the PS4 Pro that we're going to tackle in-depth. Note that this is part one of this feature, so check us out later in the week for the second and final part. Polaris and Massive Efficiency Gains The shift to AMD's new Polaris architecture and the move to the 14 nanometer fab process entails substantial efficiency gains, both from a thermal and power consumption perspective right off the bat. While AMD claims that this architecture gain in GCN 4.0 have contributed to 15% efficiency gains clock for clock, our experience with desktop Polaris and earlier hardware including the 390X, 380X, and Fury indicates that under DX11 workloads, GCN 4.0 is only marginally more efficient than GCN 1.2 or 1.3. What is far more significant, in the desktop space at least, is the shift from the 14 nanometer process that has allowed AMD to substantially ramp up its clock speeds with Polaris, as well as drastically increasing the number of CUs in a given amount of die space. What this means for the PS4 Pro is a moderately increased GPU clock, along with a substantially meatier 32CU GPU, all without substantially higher power requirements than the original PS4. In order to hit higher resolutions, the PS4 Pro has to feature a substantially more powerful graphics component. Thanks to the 14 nanometer fab process, AMD was able to cram twice as many CUs onto a die area that's only marginally larger than the pit cairn. Die size, of course, scales with cost. And this is the main reason why Sony is able to make PS4 Pro levels of graphics power available at a $399 price point. Delta color compression and 16-bit half float. The PS4 Pro is positioned as a 4K console. While gameplay for confirmed titles indicates that the Pro won't handle a native 4K output in most AAA modern games, it most certainly will be rendering most titles at a resolution higher than 1080p. Memory bandwidth scales with frame buffer resolution, and a bottleneck here will pose a significant challenge if you're looking to run games at higher resolutions. The original PS4 didn't exactly ship with an excessive amount of bandwidth. At 186 gigabits per second, and the PS4 Pro only features a modest bump in bandwidth to 218 gigabits per second, which is pedestrian compared to cards like the 390X at 384 gigabits per second, targeting higher resolutions. What's the solution here? As always, the Polaris answer is more for less. The next generation Delta Color Compression tech on board the PS4 Pro's GPU is 30% more efficient color compression on the 290X and 390X. Color compression reduces the size of the frame buffer, thereby reducing actual memory bandwidth needs. With 30% more efficient color compression, the Pro's GPU has an effective bandwidth of 283 gigabits per second as compared to the 390X. Because the Pro doesn't offer that much bandwidth as is, color compression and reduced bandwidth requirements will enable it to hit playable frame rates at higher resolutions, which is the whole point of the Pro in the first place. On the other hand, the more with less approach sees potential gains in shading performance thanks to better support of 16-bit half-float variables. With the PS4 Pro, half-float variables take up half the register space as a full-float variable. While less precise and not applicable in all scenarios, this does offer developers the possibility to further optimize performance for games on the Pro, especially later on down the line when, we're hoping, Pro exclusives will begin to crop up and compatibility with the original PS4 is no longer such a concern. Extra DDR3 freeing up more dedicated video memory. The PS4 features 8 gigs of GDDR5 memory. While this was drastically more video memory than the PS3 had, it wasn't dedicated to the GPU, meaning that, in fact, the GPU only had around 3 to 4 gigs of VRAM on tap. At lower resolutions, this is still plenty, but beyond 1080p, higher resolution textures become a substantial problem. With the PS4 Pro, Sony opted not to increase the amount of GDDR5 memory on board. This, unfortunately, has meant that the textures in the PS4 Pro games are largely unchanged from that of the PS4, with the lower resolution assets making for a somewhat painful viewing experience at 4K. Although additional GDDR5 would have been welcome, this would have likely increased costs. What's Sony's solution? The PS4 Pro gets an additional 1GB of slower DDR3 RAM, 
This will not be utilized by games per se. Rather, OS functionality like multitasking will be moved over to DDR3, which reduces system overhead on the shared GDDR5 pool. This allows developers to make use of additional 512 megs of GDDR5 RAM for games. While it might not be enough to deliver high-res textures at 4K, it is a step in the right direction. While it's possible that existing titles won't get a texture resolution bump on the Pro, the additional DDR3 indicates that developers could eke out higher resolution textures on the Pro if they can manage space effectively. Like this video? Why not give us a like and subscribe? We try and upload amazing videos almost every single day. Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one.